Hello welders, my name is Andrew and I'm the cameraman here at Weld.com Lab. And today, it's Freaky Friday, since I'm hosting and Paul is playing cameraman. Say hi, Paul. How's it going? Why the switcheroo? Well, in today's very special episode, I'm gonna teach you all content creators out there how to get a better arc shot for your very own welding videos. Arc shots, people love them. Done well, they can be both instructive and beautiful. They can also be a formidable challenge, sort of like taking a picture of the sun. Not only are you trying to see into something that is incredibly bright, but something that is usually incredibly small. So either you have to be really close or use a long lens. And focus can get pretty tricky. So I've been the camera guy here for a little more than a year and I he didn't come to this job from a welding background. Some of you who saw those first videos I shot could probably tell. Anyhow, I quickly figured out if I was going to keep this gig, I was going to have to get good at arc shots. Then again, having a shot of a nice looking finished weld is in many cases more important to the welders I work with. How do I balance the two? Well, I always tell everybody I work with to make the best weld possible and I'll do my best to capture it. Getting the right angle and exposure rarely happens straight out of the gate. And for me, it's always trial and error, and I suspect it will be that way for you too. But with a little patience and the knowledge I share with you today, you should be able to achieve something you'll be proud to share. So here we have some different gear we can use to capture that hero take. Let's start with the cell phone. Great thing about this is pretty much everyone's got one of these. And for most people, this is the only camera they'll ever need. It's portable. It's convenient, and it's full of some fantastic camera tech. I have seen some absolutely lovely welding shots done with the iPhones, like this one here from our very own Dr. Wells. Or this one, shot on an Android by new co-host Tyler Caton. The great thing about a cell phone is it can hold focus from very near to very far because of its small sensor size, which is great when you're close up to your subject. Most cell phones can also shoot 4K, which can be very useful in post-production, especially if you want to like zoom in a little more on the shot. What are the downsides? Well, it can be mostly automatic, which doesn't allow for a great deal of control when it comes to focus and exposure. Luckily, there are some good apps out there that can help give that control back to us content creators. A big one that the video folks like to use is Filmic Pro. It gives you all the manual controls you'd expect on a DSLR, but you do need to know something about photography, and it can be overwhelming for the novice. Some welders I know also like to use weld glass from hoods to control exposure. Again, different processes will need different densities, so it will take trial and error. Now, if you're shooting alone, you can use a tripod, or you can mount it any number of ways, because this is pretty small. Some of our most ingenious hosts have found ways to mount their cell phones on their hoods, which can get you fantastic angles and ensures that the camera is always pointed at the weld. I guess you really can't stop a fabricator from fabricating. All right, so let's see how this cell phone works in a real world application. I'm gonna use this welding glass and let's see what that brings us. I ball, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's pretty unnatural color, just like I said, pretty green and not super clear. Now let's try it with just the camera's own manual settings. This will let me focus and then bring the exposure all the way down. Let's see what that brings us. How about? You see that? It's a little bit of noise there, but I can quiet that down with some noise reduction, add a little color correction. And that actually looks pretty good. Clear, good color, and you can see a bit into the pool. So I would say that using the camera's own internal settings 
rather than using something like this piece of glass for a cell phone is the way to go. All right, time to look at the next option, which is an actual camera. This one is a Canon DSLR, which just means digital single lens reflex. It's got a viewfinder. It's got this handy screen. Now, with all the used gear that's floating out there, because everybody went to a cell phone, you can get this pretty cheap, oftentimes less than what that iPhone costs. What's great about it is you can go full manual or full automatic. You can also use all types of different lenses. Now, even with all the manual controls, it's still gonna get pretty bright. So to get you down, to get a good puddle shot, you can use a welding filter lens or an ND. I like to use camera filters. And this here is a variable ND filter which allows us to have the ability to change the amount of light coming in by just turning this ring. Pretty neat. These filters can be pricey, but I found good ones online for about $25 to $30. Only thing you need to know is your lens thread size, which is indicated on the front of the barrel right here. The drawback to a setup like this, well, it's not multifunctional. You can't just put it in your pocket it's heavier, so mounting it can be more difficult. It's probably not gonna go in a helmet or on a helmet. Usually, it's positioned on a tripod to the side or behind a welder. The issue with that, of course, is that eventually, whoever is doing that bead is probably gonna get in the way obscuring your image. Other than that, really beautiful results. Let me show you how I use this. All right, so now we're gonna shoot with this DSLR here. And as you can see, I'm looking at my screen and I'm focusing to the center of the weld because I know when I stop down, I'll be able to ca carry the entire length of it. And you see it goes very dark. So having your focus and your shot sized up before shooting, because once you get ready to go, it's gonna be dark until Paul lights this thing up. So you see it starts out quite bright. So I'm gonna take that variable ND and I'm gonna dial it down to right where I start to see the puddle. Now it's looking nice, but a little wide. So I'm shooting 4K. Now I can zoom in, get right in there. And now we come to my secret weapon, the MeltView Apex 3 camera from Melt Tools. As you can see, this is much smaller than a DSLR and with the mount can attach right to your torch. The big advantage of this, of course, is that nothing gets between your viewer and that weld. Now the Melt View Apex 3 comes in both color and black and white. The color suits us nicely for the sort of videos we make, while the black and white seems to be for more industrial use. The kit comes with two lenses. Micro lens like this is what is currently installed on the camera and gives us focus from six to 16 inches, right out of the box. Now you can go even closer if you loosen some set screws on the camera. This very focal lens uh, is something that you might use if you were shooting MIG or stick. And the kit comes with a great arm here. It's got a magnetic bottom so you can stick it right to your workbench. Recording happens here on my laptop using a program called OBS Studio. It's open source, absolutely free. Now the camera is tethered to a controller that has a menu so that I can manually control all of the settings. It also go full auto. Now besides using the laptop to monitor, I do loop through a larger TV so that I can make sure that my focus is spot on. Once Paul's done aiming up the camera, then it's time to really dial in the focus. I like to use the micro printing on American currency just to make sure, old Hollywood trick. Now the unit does come with an LED light to help you look at stuff and focus while you're not arcing off, because as you saw, I can get pretty dark. I choose to use uh, the manual shutter to adjust myself up and down. So Paul, you ready to get this shot? Let's get it done. All right.
So I'm here with our very own Paul Sobleski. Uh, Paul's been working with me over this last little while with the Meltools Apex 3. And I know some of you might say, well, the weight of this camera on the torch uh, might, might be awkward or difficult. What is your experience with it, Paul? Um, at first, it is a little bit difficult, a little bit uncomfortable. But, you know, the more you do it, the better you get. So I just kind of you kind of get that comfort zone knowing, um, you know, what it takes to uh, make the weld look decent, you know, or, or just weld with it. But they come out with that new little bracket there that's a lot lighter. So yes. that helped a lot. Obviously, you don't have to use uh, the bracket. You can use the arm with the magnetic bottom if you want to set this up in a more traditional way, like I did the DSLR uh, earlier. And that is advised for when you're shooting stick or MIG, because those can be dirtier processes, throwing off more spatter. spatter. <laughs> it, it does have a spatter. It does have a spatter shields on it. The, the camera does. And you should always have filters in all your lenses whenever you're shooting welding video. Uh, you're going to save yourself a lot of time, a lot of money. Uh, but still, you can set it up. But what makes this camera special is the ability to ride on uh, the torch and really get that point of view that a cell phone, you're never going to get it that close. Uh, and the DSLR, obviously, it's just not going to happen. So that's what makes this, this unit really special. One of the downsides, perhaps, is the cost, because obviously this is going to cost more than your cell phone or your DSLR. So this is really meant for businesses and institutions. Obviously, if you're making money with your welding and you want to see what kind of issues that you're having, this is a great way to diagnose issues and, and get everything back on track very quickly. We've had a lot of a lot of fun with it and got some great shots. As a matter of fact, many of the shots you've seen throughout this video are taken with this camera and they're the better ones. So obviously, well worth the money. Hopefully this video uh, has shown you how to get a good arc shot no matter what camera you're using. If you're watching this video on our app called Weld, thank you for being part of the global welding community. If you're not, you should check it out. So until next time, see you on the next one.